I look at Francis, Francis's journey is how many years? Two, three years, and she's going through mystical experiences and huge, expansive states of consciousness from two or three years of joining and connecting. And, and I think the key word is trust. You know, she did, you might share about um, Kangaroo Valley. We were down there, that was a big experience. And then I think the other experience up in your house with Jason and I was definitely, with, both of them were huge. But, if, you know, some people say, what's the key to all this? You know, is there any key? The key is trust. I mean, it's the first characteristic of a teacher of God, and I mean trust in the, the Spirit. If you make that link and that connection of trusting in the Spirit, it's going to go rapid. The ego has got no defense when you really hook up into your higher power to the, to the teacher within. You had, that was your path. My path was, was probably uh, 1985. So here, what are we now? How many years is it? 27. And then her path is three. <laughs> so <laughs> let's hear from the three. <laughs> yes, like trust is the trust of spirit. Really give trust that, you know, our analytical, logic, egoic mind doesn't know the way to freedom. So we have to let that go and trust something that is unknown to the mind. And the first, actually it wasn't the first retreat, second retreat. I had a, a two retreat with David in Sydney, Australia, back to back. A six day retreat. And then I think six weeks later, there is a 12 day retreat. So um, the second retreat, I had a one on one with David, just pour out all my fear and judgment and, and thoughts. And then in the middle of our one-on-one -on -one session, I heard an audible voice, very loud and clear, saying that David is the living representation of me, and all you need to do now is to trust David. And it was so different. I have never had experiences like that before. Just this voice was so clear to me. It's not of my egoic mind. I, I knew it straight away. And then watching David character still keep still talking, talking to me. The voice me. was coming while I was talking to her. Too. And I was just looking at him like... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just continued this, the whole session. Then um, after the retreat, David and the messengers, Jason, all went to, to stay in my house for a few more, more days in Sydney. And uh, one day, Jason and I went to have some grocery shopping. and. And I just asked him, I said, tell me, Jason, give, give it to me. What, what does it take? I want to go all the way. I want to go all the way to freedom. What does it take? And he said, trust. He said the same thing, trust. So I said, um, I heard Spirit ask me to trust David. So is that that simple? Just trust David? Trust, I feel I can trust you as well. Can, can that just be as simple as that? That's, I can relate to, you know, Holy Spirit at that time was too abstract for me. I didn't feel I could connect with the Spirit at all. I don't know what it meant to trust the Spirit, but I, I felt I could trust David, I could trust you. And he said, yes, that is actually that simple. You can just go with that and trust. So I really just started from there and and I see David and the messengers really, they, they don't have their egoic motive for anything. So really what comes through is from the spirit because there is no e egoic preference or goal or motive. So when I come closer and closer, I really feel the trust is, you know, is developing and I can really trust um, David and the messengers. But really it just, the whole experience um, have me connect with the, this inner voice because we, we do practice to have this connection with the Holy Spirit and follow. The more we follow, actually, the, more, the, the clearer we listen. We can recognize His voice more and more clearly the more I follow it. And um, when talking about no private thoughts and no people pleasing, 
it is like the people pleasing is like a, a loop. I people please because I feel unworthy of who I am. I want people to validate me and give me what I denied myself. I want them to approve me and tell me that they love me. So that's the motive of people pleasing. And the more I do that, it's like it reinforces I am this inadequate self. Actually, it just loop around there. And how can I really realize that the Holy Spirit is inside of me and is talking through me, is guiding me? If I keep thinking what other people want from me and and you know, based all my behavior pattern based on what I think the other people would want me to do, it's just like I feel like no people pleasing is almost give me an opportunity to really get in touch with the spirit and to follow and give me an opportunity to see who who I really am by just following that. And I also feel like no people pleasing really is almost need to be done with expression, no private thoughts, because when I first started to, do, to have this no people pleasing practice, I was scared that if I don't people please, I would go the total opposite way of being very nasty, and because there somehow feels there is a hatred or um, anger underneath it, underneath it, or some other people will start to get really angry at me. So I, I'm, I was scared of both sides that sort of hinder me from from no people pleasing, but. Um, because we practice no private thoughts, it's really just to give us permission to express when we don't seem to to you know behave according to what we think the other people would want us to do. Then sometimes there are guilt come out or fear. Then I will express it just to you know somehow release it. And I will say this is how I feel right now. And then I'll see there is no truth in it, really. What, you know, what I think that's in other people's mind is actually not. It's only in my mind. So, and my, my journey has been, you know, my relationship with my mother has been this no private thought, no people pleasing practice, really, because she also doesn't hold back from me. You know, along these past two, three years, just telling me how she was disappointed at me and how fearful she was and how she think I was wasting my life and my everything and and then they give me opportunity to, to actually communicate with her in a way I've never been able to. I really spoke from my heart telling her, I think this is what I truly want. God is calling me. I don't feel I have an option and I actually think this um, is set up before I was born here. So I thank you for bring me to this world, but I, you know, just by allowing myself to really express to her and still carry out whatever I feel I have to do, what the spirit want me to do, and she was saying, are you abandoning me? You are abandoning me. You know, it's all this back and forth of just communicating and then for me keep doing what I'm doing. Eventually I have experience of just following the spirit's guidance bring everybody happy, happiness, not just myself. I, you know, it brings her happiness by, follow, my, by me following the guidance and not compromising and not um, holding back. And when I, holding back, when I hold back from spirit, you know, we're either with the spirit or we're with the ego. When I hold back from the spirit, I experience the ego emotions. I experience loneliness, hatred, anger, you know, competition and I I will experience that so I have no choice I have to follow the spirit to be in alignment with that so I can extend I, I can extend the spirit I can extend the love and I, I over the year the last two years recently actually I really see the reflection back that she is actually happy and we have this real relationship very deep very authentic very open and there is no expectations you know that her love 
it's not dependent on what I'm doing or how I treated her. You know, that's that's just all go going all around.